Hey guys, so today I want to make a video going over the strat I've been doing yesterday, and that is unique printing. So what is this strat, and what does it really provide? So this is a magic find strategy, just some game plan background. But yeah, essentially you're dropping one, you know, thousands of uniques per map, you're getting like one tier zero every two to three maps, which means like one mage blood roughly anywhere from like 35 to 45 maps, I want to say. Really depends on how geared your character is, how much rarity you have, and how fast you kill stuff, which I'll go over in a second. But yeah, it's just a fun strategy. I don't think the dip in hour is like more than like 25 or 20 an hour because Mage Blood isn't that much, and you know every other unique is pretty much worthless. But it is a pretty fun strap. See in this clip, I even dropped a, uh, a Chizio right there, Rakiata's great sword. So yeah, um. This is the whole gameplay. It's extremely rippy and extremely dangerous. You need a lot of like par character power, like probably like a mirror, two mirror, three mirror character. The mobs are ridiculously tanky. Yeah. So let's go over the strat real quick. So this is the Atlas tree. I'll link down below, of course, but essentially you're trying to stack as many unique monsters into your map. So we have these like Delirium bosses because it's two unique bosses. Rogue Exile for one more unique monster. Ruckus for the, you know, high roll maps of 20 additional unique monsters. And then of course the standard, you know, quant and map effect nodes on the Atlas tree. Ritual, because if you do get bosses that spawn in your ritual, they are worth doing. Um, also Alva as well. Alva because Alva has two unique monsters. So yeah, it's all about getting as many unique monsters into your map as possible. And the reason why we're taking shrines is, of course, for Domination of Terrors and Pandemonium. So, Domination of Terrors makes shrines spawn additional Atlas bosses, and Pandemonium makes, you know, more Atlas bosses in your maps, essentially. So yeah, as much unique monsters as you possibly can for Titanic Scarab and Titanic Scarab of Legends. This is what prints all the uniques in your map. So what Titanic Scarab does, unique monsters have 2% increased toughness, damage, rarity, and quant per 1% increased pack size of the area. Now these maps, you have somewhere around like 160% pack size in your maps, meaning they're getting 320% increased damage. In other words, every single unique monster in your map is at a baseline is doing four times the damage. And they're also at minimum like four times more tanky as well, right, because increased toughness. So yeah, these maps are really insane. It's not counting like any map modifiers you have. At a baseline, everything is doing 4x the damage. You get on like any damage modifier and now they're doing like 6 to 7 times more damage. Which means you pretty much just get one shot. Because your character needs rarity, so you sacrifice some player power already. You need a lot of damage because they're really, really tanky. And you also need good clear speed. And the reason why you need good clear speed is for the horn scare of Glitterin. So how this scare works, for every enemy you killed recently, you get more item quant and more item rarity. And if you don't have a fast clear speed character, you're not gonna keep up like the 100% quant from Glitter and Scarab, which is really, really bad, because Glitter and Scarab, if you're not aware, it's the only way to get player quant, you know, in this new patch. So it's very important to have high autonomous Glitter and Scarab, which means you need a high clear speed character as well. So yeah, you need a lot of rarity, a lot of damage, a lot of clear speed. So you can't really get that much defense, and since you can't get that much defense, yeah, you're going to die a lot. It's very rough maps, but it's very rewarding as well. So that's the whole combo. You just want as many unique monsters in your maps as possible. Um, very fun strat, very good. I don't think the different hour is like really any more than like 20, 25 an hour. Um, also, besides Mage Blood, your profit just comes from like dust and uniques. You get a lot of uniques and corrupting uniques. You know, like practically every tier one right now sells for like half a divine. And you'll find usually like a few tier ones a map. Um, I don't know, like four or five tier ones if you show all of them. So the dust alone, if you do sell your dust, will pay for the map. And then stuff like Mage Blood Drop, it will be like pure profit. But yeah, it depends if you want to sell dust or not. You can sell dust and stuff like EOT or whatever, or trade website, whatever you want to do. So yeah, I mean, that's the whole strategy. It's not insane or anything. It's just very, very fun, especially something to do with this lane in the league because there's not that much stuff to do outside of boxes. I guess one thing how to roll your maps real quick. So yeah, this is how you roll your maps. Uh, Sanctuary is the best, but Fortress is not bad if you want an easier boss to do as the boss is extremely hard. The Sanctuary boss, every single attack will one shot you. Yeah, how you roll your maps is essentially you will Chaos Orb spam until you get 70% uh, pack size, 
and then at least 100% rarity and 100% item quant. You could also do like 60% pack size if the map has extremely high quant and extremely high rarity. Like let's say this map has like 60% pack size and 140% rarity and like 100% quant, you would run that. So yeah, it's just a good mix of quant, rarity, and pack size. But pack size is the most important role here. And the reason for that is the Titanic Scarab, which gives increased you know, rarity and quant per 1% pack size in the area. The pack size in the map is extremely important. So for example, this one is 71% rarity, 118% quant. I want to run this. The rarity is too low. It's 75% pack size, 100% rarity, 117% quant. This is a good map. Like I said, you want like 70% pack size and at least 100% rarity and 100% quant or like 120 to 130 rarity and quant with like 60 to 55% pack size. Uh, more pack size is always better. I always prefer the high pack size maps. After that, you're gonna want to use your four Maven chisels. This gives it more pack size. These are pretty expensive. I think it's like one divine per four, but they are very, very worth it for the strat. And then anywhere for one to three deli orbs, at minimum, you really wanted to two. The reason why I wanted to two deli orbs is that if you do two deli orbs plus this delirium nodes, this guarantees two unique bosses. So yeah, that's two unique monsters. So yeah, at least two deli orbs. And if your character's strong enough, you can do three. And if you're in a group player or something duo, you might do like four deli orbs. I wouldn't do five though. But yeah, that's how you really maps. And uh, that's pretty much it. If I missed anything, you know, feel free to leave a comment. And yeah, that's about it.